Hi, Sandy here. I'm still alive. I think it's been over a month since I've made a, a video. Um, you know, life just happens. I've been busy. Um, I've been working every day. No vacations. Um, just life has been happening. Um, but now I'm ready to play with my glue books. Um, I've been working on... Um, I don't think I did a video... I did some Christmas in July, played with this um, glue book for a while. Um, th th these are those old vintage um, scrapbooks like they used back in the 50s and whenever. Um, and I had gone through and put full page pictures or calendar pages on every page and um, now I'm I was adding a few things, filling in the pages. Um, this is my first Christmas book in, in one of these books. I've already done three of these. These are the kind that I like to bind myself. They're eight and a half by eleven. I've got over twenty of these books, various subjects. Um, I just color cover both sides of eight and a half by eleven pages, and then. Here's my stitching. I bind them together. And um, I tried once binding it together with the cover on. And it just, I don't know, I didn't like the way it turned out. So I put the cover on after I bind it. Um, so I've been playing with my Christmas book. Um, I have so much outdoor garden, lawn, or nature, gardening stuff, pictures, birds, butterflies, animals, flowers. I've just been working. I did an entire um, glue book. This one. I did this entire glue book. Filled it, just filled it up <laughs> really fast with all of my my outdoor gardening stuff. You can even put a dog in there. You know, um, filled that up and I immediately went on to my next book which I'm going to be working on a little bit today um, and then I I did not videotape this at all but I decided to do an autumn book and it's nearly done I need some more stuff <laughs> uh, I'm, and I have collected a few more things so I just have a little bit left to fill in but this book I, I found, discovered is very very old and some of these pages are very brittle and um, well, this one I put some washi tape on. That didn't seem to help much. But I've I've had to add some masking tape, and and I might when I get it done, I might take it apart, take this off if I can, and put uh, this one I got masking tape on. I have to reinforce some of these pages because they're just really dry and crumbly. See, this is cracking right there. And, and I, I need I got a little bit more to fill in on these pages. I got most of them done. But I did an autumn book, and, uh, which includes some Thanksgiving and and autumn and Halloween. Um, and I've been organizing a lot of my stuff. I had a big pile of stickers that I got from Dollar Tree. We have a new Dollar Tree in town and oh they've got good selection. I went twice and the second time I thought well I already bought all their latest stuff so um I probably won't buy any more. They had a lot of new ones again so I had a lot of stickers. And then I've gone through some of my books. This one is my dogs for scrapbooking or whatever um and these are my tag borders that I have made previously um and then um, my tags for dogs, my dog scrapbook, and then then um, things I can decorate pages with, and things I can make more tags and borders with. That's my thing, tags and borders. But I've gone through and gotten these super organized, and and it, and it inspires me. Oh, look at all this stuff! I need to use some of it up and make some more tags and borders because I don't think you can have too many tags and borders. So I, I got the birthday done. And Dogs and cats and the wedding done. And I just have been organizing stuff. So now, on to what I've got going on here. 
here's another big scrapbook. Um, I've already gone through and glued um, a full size magazine page or a calendar page, some of them I had to trim down, to one side all the way through like this. And now I'm filling in the rest. So let's get started. And like anything else, there's no rules. Just trying to stick with an outdoor theme. Theme. Well, I've been busy working. And last weekend we went to um, my daughter and her boyfriend and my husband and I. Four of us went to Adventureland in in near Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, that's like two hours away from our house. Uh, spent the day there. And I'm 62 now. <laughs> I've had the um, problem with my legs and it's never going to go away. It's a debilit... It's a... What do they call it? It continues to get worse. Um, not not that I'm not that much worse, but I was... I, I had had physical therapy and I was doing a lot better and I went back to work uh, but over time and and I got to the point with the physical therapy they had printed it out for me to to do it at home but it had gotten to the point where um, I felt that it wasn't doing any good because I was all better <laughs> well now I went to, back to the doctor um, about a couple weeks ago and told her it's starting to bother me a little bit. I, I went to get blood work done because I, I'm on blood pressure medication and and just to, you know, update that. So she said you you need to start doing those that physical therapy again. So I took the folder of my papers off the shelf and laid it on my desk and it's still sitting there. I haven't even opened it up and looked at the exercises. I did once um I some of the exercises, just what I can remember in my head, but I just can't get into it. But I, I know I have to do it, and I know that they work, and I just haven't done it. And I'm feeling it. It's, some days, I just really get worn out, most days. And we've been having such a heat wave it's fine a little bit better but the humidity has been so bad and and where I work in the warehouse I'm the janitor but it's we are all we're all just working in the humidity and that just wears you down as it is plus I have arthritis in my hips which I discovered with this other problem and mo for the most part it doesn't bother me but every once in a while I can feel it and and I also learned that arthritis can cause fatigue and I can feel that so I, I do try to rest a lot and I have not hardly been in my craft room at all um, the last few weeks uh, but I did I do miss it so I need to slide this over here some more so you can see this other side slide my glue mat over so I got room to glue okay can you see that I need to turn this around because I don't want it under my book it would be a big mess anyway I hope you got a good view of that anyway so we were at Adventureland and my husband, my daughter never has like the really scary rides. And my husband says he's, oh, I'm getting too old for that. But I like fast roller coasters and stuff. And I call them spinny rides. I used to like those, but the last 10 years or so as I'm getting older, those just make me nauseous. So I, I do them sometimes, but I don't really like those. My daughter does like the spinny rides. She's younger. She don't get... I get dizzy and I get a headache from them now. But she, but she didn't want to ride very much. So I rode the roller coaster. A really... One of the really drastic ones. With my... Her boyfriend. While my husband and daughter just waited. And um... We rode... A, 
a wooden roller coaster. Those are really bumpy. Uh, she wouldn't ride that one either. We rode a few rides. And then we just we were just passing by. Let's let's ride the merry-go-round. I could not get my legs up over that horse to ride the merry-go-round. Oh, it's heck getting old. Oh, and we didn't. It was hot, and we didn't do a lot. Um, I don't know if it was nationwide news, but uh, about a month ago, at this at this park, they have the Raging River. I think it's called. Uh, where the, you ride that boat that that's like a round thing and you ride it uh, and it's like uh, kind of like riding the rapid river you know and something happened and it one of the the rafts got flipped over upside down well, the water's not very steep it probably comes up to your chest for an adult but you have to buckle in I think you have to buckle in and there were some ki a couple of kids in the family and um, so they were upside down in the water buckled in and um, one of them ended up dying so that ride is shut down and we always love that ride but I imagine they still have this, the same, very same ride in other places in the country I just realized, I think this one is a sticker. I'm not sure. No, maybe not. Maybe. Let me get my razor blade and see if this is a sticker. I've already glued it on there, but if it's a sticker... Oh, never mind. So I'll put that right here. You know, I love my Holly Hobby. Isn't she sweet? Okay, so this, these two pages are done. I've already done these two. This is an ad out of a 1967 look magazine, I believe. Uh, it's it's old. It's an old ad. A dollar eighty nine for a new, brand new rake. Although they look almost like children's tools with that boy holding them. Anyway. And then I had these stickers with the garden boots and, and a stamp with butterfly. And I had these little teeny teeny tiny stickers. I used those up. Um, and I've got this page done. I didn't show you both sides of the page. And you, you, you uh, recently I went through my greeting cards. This was off of a greeting card. Um, I had been collecting greeting cards for over 45 years. Since I was 18. I saved every birthday card, Christmas card, every greeting card. I've saved them all. And I sorted through them. I kept all of them from my first and second husbands. Um, I think all of them that my ma mother has given me. Um, but mo most of them, I, and I divided them up by the people who had given them to me. And I kept like one from each person, a couple from each person. And I got rid of over half of them. I didn't get rid of them. <laughs> I cut them up, the backs off, and I fussy cut some of them. And um, so I think this is a ca greeting card. That I think it was probably a Christmas card. But um, I saved them, and I will be using them in my glue books. So this is the next page I'm going to do, and I'm going to gather up some stuff. I think it's probably boring for you to watch me gather up this stuff, so I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I'm ready to glue some more stuff on. So this is out of a catalog. These are cutouts that you can put in your yard. Okay, yeah, I got it centered under there. I'm sure you could see it well. So, you know, this year I think I have had so much bad luck. Um, you know, last December I've talked about we had our basement waterproofed. Um, we got estimates for ten thousand dollars, two of them, and I'm like, wow, that's too much. So in December I found a company online that they did it for seven thousand dollars that's the inside the basement um dig it out trenching along the walls um putting in drainage pipe to a corner where they got the pit and 
added two sump pumps, one for electric and one for um, um, battery backup in case you have power failure. So they got that done in January, got it done before Christmas. And then I have had um, concrete floors in part of the basement. The basement was, I've built walls and divided into rooms. Um, the wa exterior walls are just cinder block painted. Um, I've got drywall walls in the middle to, to make rooms. Um, and um, I've left the ceiling just a regular basement ceiling with the studs and the plumbing and the electrical up there. And I'm not going to ever get it done because finished completely because that raises the taxes on your house. And we've already put a huge addition on our house 12 years ago. And that doubled our taxes. So, But anyway, we got that done. So I decided, well, I want to um, install laminate flooring throughout the basement since it's not going to be getting wet anymore. And I want to repaint everything and just make it look nice. Of course, we had hauled everything out of the basement except the washer and dryer and freezer up to the garage and hauled it back down. And I'm a do the do-it-yourselfer in the family. I, I did m almost all the work, but that's when I started having this health problem and my legs were s and hips were just hurting me and I, I pushed myself through it and I got it done and it just kept getting worse and worse and I actually felt okay while I was working and get all limbered up but then when I'm done oh my god and it got to the point where I could hardly walk by the time I finished um, and then I, I, I ended up missing two months of work. I was on disability at work for two months because I just couldn't walk hardly. It was hard. Uh, so I got through that. But then in January while I was still off work and going through to physical therapy, um, my basement flooded. Uh, well, the, the, the floor drain overflowed, which has nothing to do with the waterproofing. So I called Road Rooter and they fixed it and charged me and tried to tell me uh, I needed the drain line out to the um, street replaced for $18,000. Oh my god. And then, then uh, the water had seeped underneath of my new flooring and uh, soaked up into the drywall and they called their... Um, I didn't invite them into my house. They called and had their... Um, uh, they have water cleanup service. Don't ever go hire them. They cheat you. Anyway, so they came out and they they uh, talked me into letting them uh, move all my stuff into storage because I can't move it now with me being in pain. Uh, they would. Th uh, tear up the flooring and tear out the bottom part of the walls and disinfect the floors, which they did. And then they left their fans and dehumidifier and air cleaner. And they would have someone come out every day to check the water, how dry it is. And for $800 a day. Come on. Uh, and they told me, oh, well, don't worry about it. Insurance will pay for everything. You just have to pay your deductible. Yeah, okay. So, they ripped me off. Uh, the insurance company said, well, here's how. Um, they are the only Roto-Rooter in the nation, because they deal with Roto-Rooter across the nation, who charges an extra fee for um, um, profit and overhead. Well, I think at $800 a day, just to have their equipment in the basement, I think they're making plenty of profit and overhead. Um, and they said, well, we deducted that. It was over $1,000 they added on for profit and overhead. They said, we're not paying that. So they subtracted it and sent it to them. And uh, they weren't happy. They told me it's my responsibility. They even um, turned it over to the collection agent. I have not paid it. And I do pay my bills. I have a high credit score. I live within my means and I pay my bills, but I haven't paid that. 
and um, it was just a nightmare dealing with dealing with them. So then I, another a third company came along and um, uh, installed new flooring and fixed the drywall and finished up the basement for a grand total of for between these three companies was fourteen thousand dollars where after we got the water for basement waterproofed I only spent eight hundred dollars for new flooring and paint and stuff anyway so then we're going through winter and I'm, I'm back at work um, we're not having a lot of snow melt the, wa the basement's nice and dry um, I've never seen the, wa the um, sump pump work so then about a month ago a little over a month ago we had a big storm it knocked down a lot of trees and stuff um, it tore one shingle off our house um, and it's in the backyard well we had this problem a few years ago I tore a chunk of three shingles off and um, one company wanted to charge me three hundred dollars to replace three shingles come on it took me a while to find someone I could trust and they got it done but now I have to find somebody to fix this because I don't remember who fixed it before and um, so I did all this off of, out of view and so um, and also the water, the sump pump in the basement with, with the rain we had a light is blinking on there a red light saying um, the pump has been activated check for failure what do I know about sump pumps? I've never had a sump pump in any, in any of my previous houses. I don't know anything about them. Um, so, um, like the next day it had drained out because there was gravel in the bottom. And then, then um, we had another storm maybe 10 days ago. I don't know. And um, I got the shop vac and I sucked out all the water. Three 12 gallon shop vac full and dumped it down the drain and still it's not working I don't know what's wrong with it I don't think it was installed properly actually and then uh, we had another storm a little over a week ago two weeks ago no it was a week ago and uh, I go down before bed to check see how it's going the level in the thing was literally like about an inch from overflowing into my basement the basement was dry it was, it was working going down you know underneath and getting in the the pipes and going them to that sump pump corner but the sump pump wouldn't work so and the level was above the pipes coming in so I filled up that shop back 13 times that's 166 gallons of water before it finally drained and then I finally I got out the manual and I, oh my gosh it says you're supposed to when you install it you're supposed to drill a hole a vent hole into the pipe coming up that pumps outdoors there was no hole so I drilled a hole and of course it's down in the pit and I can't get down in there so I drilled it in at an angle like this <laughs> so when it came through that line was completely full of water there was an airlock and it squirt right in my face up, up out of the pit oh no and it says that um, um, water coming out trickling out of there is normal so I know so I got a pop bottle and I cut it up and made a shield and so it goes back in there so I called a the plumber they're coming tomorrow um, because after Rota Rooter told me I had to replace my line for eighteen thousand dollars, I called another plumber and they said, oh, "Oh no, you're being ripped off. You don't need to replace that line." So this is my favorite company. <laughs> and since then, um, after we got the the basement all fixed up again, the in the laundry room the pipe coming up that drains your washing machine, it was overflowing. I, I had to call my favorite plumber out, my new favorite plumber out, and they they fixed that. Um, and then. Uh, when they had the walls cut out in the basement I discovered a little teeny tiny puddle like that big it was drying as fast as it was coming out but you don't want no, your water heater dripping because it can eventually burst so I called my favorite company five hundred dollars they plus I bought a uh, new water heater for five hundred dollars they replaced the water heater for me and then um October 2019 we bought a new 
uh, Chevy pickup. And I'm not, I'm fine with it. And I paid a thousand dollars a month. And then it got down to the point where, okay, I only owe like four or five thousand dollars. I got that much money in the bank. So I paid off that truck in 19 months. Okay, so my husband's car is 11, is 2011. It's 10 years old. Um, it's little, starting to have a little bit of problems. We're going to save up our money and buy a new car, pay cash. Oh no, a month later, January 3rd, July 3rd, we bought a, a brand new Chevy Nissan and traded in our car because the transmission started going out. And right now with the computer problem with cars, they can't get the computer chips for their brand new cars, so there's nothing out there. So the used cars are going way up in value because they don't have anything to sell. So, um, so we bought a brand new car. <laughs> I looked at a used one that only cost a thousand dollars less, but it was used. <laughs> so got a new car, and uh, like a week, a couple of weeks ago, my husband went to leave. And it was like the battery was totally dead. It would not start. Nothing would happen. Nothing. It was like a totally dead battery. So we had to wait several hours for the uh, roadside assistance to come. And, and he jumps, boosted it and it popped, started right up. And he said, you take that right to the dealership and have them look at it. And I, I mean, we had, we had the car a month and it's, it wouldn't start. And the dealership said, well, the battery's strong. We didn't have to charge it. The alternator's good. We can't find nothing wrong. We don't know why that happened. And it hasn't happened again. Sometimes things just happen as a fluke. And so the, then I got a, um, our air conditioner wasn't working very well. And they came and serviced us and added Freon. I said, did you check for leaks? It says, no, your air conditioner's so old. It's not worth the money to check for, free, for leaks. If it keeps doing that, you know you're going to need a new one. Well now, now it's making loud noises. It's <laughs> it sounds terrible. It's working fine though, but I know I'm gonna need to get a new air conditioner. It's this year has just been one thing after another after another. I took my cat to the vet yesterday because he's a long-haired orange cat and he's getting matted up. And um, this will be the third time he's 12 years old. Um, they they'll cut his hair. He's getting some mats, so they'll give him a haircut. They have to put him under. So I called, and well, we haven't seen him in a long time. You have to have had a checkup within six months. So bring him in for a checkup, and they won't make make appointments. It's walk in only. So yesterday, Saturday, I took him in. I had a I was there for two and a half hours. I I was two hours in the waiting room. Uh, they charged me fifty two dollars for an office visit to just a, for a quick check over. Uh, they gave him updated one of his shots his, his rabies was was up to date but hundred and over a hundred dollars and then they said they got flea, fleas so he gave me a flea treatment and so then we scheduled his um his haircut but oh they can't do that for almost a month because they're too busy and like everybody else they don't have enough help and can't find anybody um, it's just one thing after another and we're doing okay. We're <laughs> I'm, I'm very frugal with our money, and, and I've got back emergency backup money, but this year, just one thing after another, and I'm getting really tired of it. Um, so, I think I'm going to wrap up this video, and maybe I'll try. No, I'm not making any promises, but maybe I'll make another one soon. Bye-bye.